You better subscribe or else, well, I'm going to break your skull with a hammer. G'day, welcome to Tank Mechanic Simulator. Normally we would be looking at, well, the T-34 Calliope, or Calliope. And having never really had an interest in scary games or various other things, I thought, well, this is an opportune time to sort of just restore and talk about a tank that is rather unknown. Although it isn't really that unknown. The developers of uh, Tank Mechanic Simulator have decided to add in a interesting mechanic and uh, this is the halloween event for well 2023 anyway i'm going to be lazy using the drone in the excavation i never usually showcase these things essentially what the drone allows you to do is go and scan i just i just hate the whole excavation mechanic and then you can see there's the tank right there so if i just close that and then right click and accept what we have in here just digging a hole casually. Pressure washer. Here we go. Gonna clean up the Tiger 213. More on that tank in a little second or two. But uh, we're gonna give her a good old rinse. I believe there's a uh, machine gun laying over on the ground over there as well. So pick that one up. Just casually, just picking up an MG34, in, you know, as you do. And uh, yeah. Let's uh, avoid the big scary spider behind the truck there and go ahead and let's restore this vehicle. Now you know how we do things here at Ash Productions. We fix all the welding problems, we then take the turret off, we then put the engine in its separate bay and then we do uh, strip the engine completely, which we've already done. Uh, and we have found high explosive uh, armor piercing capped ballistic shells as you do inside a Tiger. But this being the Halloween event, the whole entire battlefield, of, at least at the start when you're digging up, has a interesting sound. It's the sound of Russians uh, firing machine guns at this Tiger and occasional tank sounds. What's interesting about this is this very tank belongs to Otto Karius, one of the German tank aces. He was an officer which, during the training course, completed uh, being a commander and was assigned to the 502nd tank battalion immediately after in April 1943. Basically being one of the first units in the German military to be equipped with Tiger tanks, this tank is infamous for being, well, quite interesting. And Otto used this to his advantage. Notably, he took uh, eight Tigers and then put six in reserve basically went after a town that the Russians were occupying and basically destroyed four T-34s that were guarding the village As and the, while the six remaining Tigers joined them all eight Tigers then successfully defended the village from Russian reinforcements which totaled 17 tanks one of them being the new IS-1 Otto Karius has said that he didn't know what the vehicle was that he was facing he didn't know whether the Russians had actually managed to capture a newer vehicle which hadn't quite uh, appeared on battlefield yet that being the infamous king tiger anyhow he got wounded uh was sent back uh and examined by field medic and discovered he was miraculously alive after being left in a ditch after taking a bullet in the leg his arm and two in the back before seeing well a russian officer standing over him now he did manage to survive and was examined by a field medic and discovered that he was miraculously alive after the experience with a Russian officer. Uh, during his recovery he was transferred to the 512th Heavy Anti-Tank Battalion which basically gave him and equipped with Yag Tigers. So that was on the 8th of March 1945. I still hadn't completed its training, was sent to the front line near Seaberg and Carriers noted that everybody knew that war was lost. On the 15th of April, facing untenable pressure from the Allies, Carriers' company surrendered to the United States Army, and then Carriers went on to study at the University of Heidelberg after getting his degree and opened a pharmacy called the Tiger Apothecate, in honour of the Tiger Tank, which he ran until 2011. Uh, Otto Carriers died on the 24th of January 2015, aged 92 and his escapades and apparently some of his other squad mates went on to uh, crew and field and other vehicles which is fascinating this is the moment here where i realized that i well the, the game developers were just pulling a leg uh this this skin looks quite interesting it's actually better than most i kind of wish they had more options or more historical options because i'd love to do some of the other uh, videos on some of the other tiger tank aces although 
ground forces isn't necessarily my uh, strong suit, this vehicle definitely piqued an interest in, you know, ground vehicle and, and I guess mechanized combat. Anyhow, we've repaired the engine. Now I'm just going to double check that it's actually fully intact. There is another famous uh, King Tiger uh, 213. Essentially, it was recovered by three Sherman recovery tanks during the towing. The, and the tank moved, making so much noise that a local resident came out and he traded the tank for a bottle of cognac, which is now has a place for the December 1944 museum being located in the old vicarage of the town La Glaise. I think that's La Glaise. Anyway, French is not my strong suit, neither is pronouncing things. But the other famous tiger, I believe, was Tiger 231. And... That is a vehicle which, on the account, uh, basically has survived a, well, a huge amount of things. Tiger 231 a drove over an embankment at dawn during an offensive. It has encountered multiple T-34s, anti-tank guns, and over a six-hour-long attack, it received multiple hits from 76mm, 57mm, and small anti-tank rounds. Extensive damage was received to the suspension, and another round struck the barrel next to the mantlet, keeping the gun stuck in a recoiled position. Although this Tiger 231 maintained the fire at Soviet positions, it reportedly destroyed 12 T-34s. And after the battle, Tiger 231 remained undaunted, slowly limped off the battlefield under its own power, despite, well, the gun suddenly being broken by the long 88 uh, and its recoil. Uh, but travelling some 60 kilometres back to a maintenance area, and after examining the tank, the action revealed an incredible 252 hits. And the vehicle was basically pocket marked with strikes from 14.5mm uh, AP anti-tank rounds. In addition, had taken 14 hits from 45 and 57mm anti-tank guns, shrugged off 11 hits from 76.2mm field guns, and then basically became, well, an at this period of time, two categories of weapons were more adequate for dealing with it, uh, basically went to Germany to be inspected for weaknesses in the design that was fixed for future production models. Anyhow, we're, what we're doing here is we're just equipping the vehicle with various bits and pieces. But, you know, for what it's worth, you know, this vehicle is superstitious in, in nature, I suppose. The great myth of the Tiger is the most and the best tank of the Second World War and, you know, allied accounts of co uh, coming across these vehicles in which they were discovered to be, well, not actually getting engaged by a Tiger, but everything the Allies came against, especially, you know, early in 1944 was, oh my God, I'm getting shot at by a Tiger. In fact, they might have been getting shot at by a 75 millimeter uh, Panzer IV or something else because those were in more ready supply. Anyhow, we're going to be installing all of the road wheels and some of the things on this vehicle. Oh, I've got all the double wheel spaces, the other various inner and outer wheels. This thing must have been an utter pain. And I mean, I've only just started. I've put all the torsion bars in and the sprockets, various other uh, bits and pieces, as well as idle arms. Now I'm going to go through and attach all of the uh, various uh, spaces here as we're still slowly getting through. There's another inner wheel that we have to do. And you think, oh, this doesn't look like a Tiger. You've only got a couple more wheels to go. Uh, no. <laughs> this is going to be a very long time. In fact, I think I'm just going to time lapse it just to show you how many things there are. And this is only one side of the vehicle. With that done, it's time to put the tracks on and we can basically slam these, these tracks down. Not exactly a historical representation of how you put tracks on a vehicle. It's a lot more involving process. I'm just going to put the gearbox in real quick. Just you know, just, just casually put in the, 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 uh, the gearbox. I wish this game utilized more of the overhead crane system for putting the turret back on and putting the engine on and all this sort of stuff. A little mini game would be really cool for that kind of thing. But... For what it's worth, this game does an okay detail, at, at, and especially since this is the, well, and technically it's a new Tiger. Anyhow, 
I saved you 20 minutes. Let's uh, go fill out the rest of the interior of the vehicle. The engine bay, the various other bits and pieces. We've got a huge amount of things. So what I'm just going to put the motor shield in and the motor shield bay in, as well as the drive shaft and all the battery boxes. We're also going to go do the fuel tanks, which don't look like fuel tanks. They look like cardboard boxes with cheese in them. But I must be hungry. Anyway, put on the fuel tanks, make sure those are all on and the radiator caps, put the fans back in and put the water cooling. Again, this is a very early model. I believe the Tiger was one of the very first vehicles they actually put in this game. So, you know, it is what it is. And for what it's done, you know, I've covered every single vehicle that they've ever come out with. And, you know, it's been a pleasure doing that. So hopefully you have enjoyed the Tank Mechanic Sim content because... I'll never stop covering it unless they uh, actually get, you know, end up by cancelling the game. Right. Well, after about five minutes of tinkering, I realised I'd actually managed to complete the whole entire vehicle in total. Uh, total time spent was 42 minutes. And I can't put the machine gun in, but I found out some of those decorators on the field you can actually just put uh, as items. There's even got some machine guns down there, which uh, I'll probably store in those cases down here. But otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a short one today. I have other expectations to uphold, as well as a War Thunder patch coming. Uh, thanks for watching. Happy Halloween.